Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. Let's talk about Arch Linux's Hyperland in depth. What are the key features? How can we maximize the tool? So without further ado, let's get right into it. We are going dark. So Arch Linux with Hyperland offers a unique and customizable desktop experience, right? Uh, let's first talk about the installation. You know, there are several common issues, uh, I have to say that, um, that users may encounter when installing and using Hyperland on Arch Linux, right? Or Arch Linux, whatever you want to call it. So the installation and setup issues, right? There's the incorrect installation methods. Some users attempt uh, to install third-party configurations or scripts without fully understanding them, which can lead to errors. There's the missing dependencies, failing to install all required packages can cause hyperlent to malfunction. Then there's the permissions issues, not installing the pull kit package can prevent hyperlent from starting due to missing permissions. Uh, there's the hardware and driver related problems. There's the NVIDIA GPU compatibility, right? NVIDIA users often face issues due to lack of explicit sync support in Hyperland. This can result in problems like inability to log in, flashing windows, and high CPU usage. There's virtual machine issues. Hyperland may not work properly in VMs without enabling 3D hardware acceleration. Configuration and usage challenges are a factor as well. There's incorrect and you know there's incorrect configuration file usage misusing exec and exec once commands in the configuration file can lead to applications starting multiple times or causing race conditions there's the environment variable setup users may struggle with setting environment variables correctly in the hyperland configuration file here are some specific bugs and errors. You have the XDG desktop portal hyperland CPU usage, which is a known bug causes high CPU usage, um, though it may be resolved in the latest uh, Git build. There's electron app flickering. That's the NVIDIA users, uh, you know, experiencing flickering with native the Wayland electron apps. There's the blank screen on login. This can occur especially in virtual machines if 3D acceleration is not enabled. You have unexpected you know behavior right users report issues like key bindings not working as expected or hyperlens shutting down unexpectedly okay uh, to mitigate these issues it's recommended to follow the official arc Linux and hyperland documentation for installation ensure all necessary drivers and dependencies are installed pay attention to hardware specific requirements especially for Nvidia GPUs uh, carefully configure hyperland using the proper syntax and commands consider using the latest git build for the most up-to-date fixes now after installing hyperland there are several base you know best practices for configuring it effectively now you're going to want to first organize configuration files use a modular configuration approach by splitting your hyperland.conf into logical uh, sections then you're going to want to create separate files for different aspects like auto start key bindings windows rules etc include these files in your main hyperland.conf uh, using the source command here are some you know configuration uh, steps that are important they're essential you're gonna want to set up your monitor you know set up your monitor configuration including resolution and refresh rate configure input devices like keyboards and mice uh, define key bindings for common actions and window management set up uh, auto start applications, customize appearance and behavior, configure and uh, animations and decorations to like to your liking, right? Set up windows rules for specific applications, customize the layout and gaps between windows. That is key. Customize them things. Okay. Then you're going to want to utilize hyperlink tools. Use, uh, you know, hype control for runtime configuration and debugging. Familiarize yourself with hype uh, RPM for plugin management. Now, there's the setup of the environment. Configure environment variables, right? Directly in the hyperland.conf using the ENV keyword. Using the exec once for launching applications and daemons at boot and exec only for commands that should run on every config uh, reload. Then there's additional software. Install the Wayland compatible file manager, uh, the Thunar, and configure a keybind for it. Set up a Wayland compatible application launcher like uh, WOF. Configure a power control menu uh, like the NWG bar. And then, you know, here is where you can get a little decor, right? With your theming and appearance self. So you can use tools like the NWG look for GTK theming and the QT5 
CT slash QT6 CT for QT applications. Configure your cursor theme and ensure it's properly set. Now there is the screen sharing and recording. Prepare Hyperland for screen sharing and recording capabilities. So uh, for performance optimization, if you're using NVIDIA, refer to the NVIDIA specific configuration guidelines. For virtual machines, ensure 3D acceleration is enabled. Now, remember to reload your configuration, which is the hyper control reload after making changes and restart the Hyperland session for some settings to take effect regularly, okay? so. You're going to also want to regularly check the Hyperland wiki and community resources for updates and new features to enhance your setup. Now, uh, when it comes to the Hyperland configuration, it's highly customizable, right? Uh, it has a highly customizable tiling window manager. It uses the text-based configuration file located at the config hyper, uh, hyperland.conf. Uh, users can define key bindings, window behaviors, and appearances uh, settings in this file. The config file allows for setting up auto start applications, default programs, and environment variables. There's user experience, right? Once set up, Hyperland provides a unique desktop environment, windows tile automatically maximizing screen space usage, and the animations and effects create a smooth modern feel. So the interface is primarily keyboard driven with customizable shortcuts, a top bar, often using uh, the way bar, which displays system information and status, right? There's the application launchers like the ROFI that allow for quick program access. Now, when it comes to customization, Hyperland's flexibility allows for extensive personalization. Users can customize themes, colors, and fonts to their liking. Additional components like custom scripts can be integrated for enhanced functionality. So the community often shares dot files and configurations for inspiration. Now, there is going to be somewhat of a learning curve here, so prepare for it, right? Transitioning to Arc Linux with Hyperland can be challenging, right? It requires familiarity with Linux concepts and command line usage, uh, users need to be comfortable reading documentation and troubleshooting. The minimalist nature of Hyperland means many features need manual configuration. So you're going to have to do, 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 do some of these, do some of these, do some of these. So while the initial setup can be complex, many users find the resulting system to be efficient, fast, and tailored to their exact preferences. So the Arc and Hyperland communities are generally helpful for those seeking assistance during the learning process okay so that is what i have for you today please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button again if you like this video if you appreciate it if you want more content like this please hit that subscribe button and the like button um also uh, hit that notification bell and let me know your opinion in the comment section below so one of the things that i have guys that i want to talk to you about is Okay, we get it. It's customizable Arc Linux with the Hyperland, but what would what would you use Hyperland for? I, I get it, right? Because uh, you know it, it, it is a good application, uh, Linux. Um, it's useful for many things, but I'm not sure if it can really make that big of an impact uh, if it's primarily centered around customization, right? Customizability. Uh, I think that it has, there has to be some technical, technical, technical aspects because, okay, you can, you can paint your, you can paint the car red, blue, green, uh, you can put this rims on it, but, uh, how does the car drive? How does the car drive and what are the use cases out there? So, uh, that is, uh, what I have and ponder and think about that and let me know your, your opinion in the comment section below. Stay safe. Uh, I'll see you on the next video.